Sorry, crafty friends. It my camera haven't got a chance to put on my microphone. So I hope this microphone works because I attached it after the video started, so I hope it's not trying to use the internal microphone. And if it is, I apologize. And I can restart the stream. So somebody tell me. Alright, so here's what's going on today. I have a special treat of more retiring items. So we're going to make some cards using punches today. My The theme of this video is, and the theme of this little series I've created is called Less Chance Items in the 2020-2021 Annual Catalog. So I like to, in this series, I like to just tell you some great deals that you can get. I like to start off by telling you the great deals. Hi Gina, can you tell me if my microphone is attached or if, if it sounds like some kind of echo chamber or if it sounds okay? Um, hi Linda from Denmark. All right, so anyway, what I do is first is I talk about these great deals. Then I'm going to make things with these products as much as I can. Maybe some things I planned, maybe some things I didn't plan. Who knows how this video will go? It's live. You never know. And then, okay, good. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so then then what I do, and then I'm going to go back through and, and do the, you know, prices again at the end because I know people come in late. All right, so I need to, I need to just tell you about these deals, right? Oh, my goodness. I can't get it. Oh. First of all, if you joined me in my last Last Chance video, thank you so much. I actually continued. I just Before I tell you about these deals, I finished making more things from that video. So we made these in my last video. So if you missed it, World of Good Sweet, the products are still on the, on the Last Chance. I don't think they sold out as of this morning, but in the punches I'm checking on just now, I made more things since I spoke to you guys and since we crafted live. I created more cards. So, I mean, I'm just having so much fun with the world of good sweet, and I plan on ordering some more paper right after this. There's some envelopes. So, and I made two boxes. Well, I made one live with you guys. So if you missed that video and you just want to craft along with me, whether you have this material or not, just craft along with me. I have so much fun crafting and making things live because it's just so unpredictable, really. Just like now, my whole thing started before I even got a chance to hook my camera up. All right, so... Punches. Now this is the next best great deal. These I put in my newsletter. I thought it was such a great deal. You can get these punches. Let me just tell you the price and then I'll show you on the page where to find them. $7.20. Hello. Okay. And then I'll find the page. $7.20. I mean, you just, you can't, you can't believe it. It's $18 here. This is an $18 retail value butterfly duet punch. And it's now $7.20. Okay, that's the first one. And we'll be using that today. Then we have this uh, umbrella. Umbrella builder. Okay. That is $7.20. Okay, we're going to use that today. We're going to use the apple builder. That's $7.20. Again, these were originally $18. And then we're going to use... Well, I was going to try to use this one. Actually, I did try to make something with it. My husband tried to help me fix it too. But I lost the piece and it keeps falling out. I dropped the punch, lost the piece. So now I, I can't really use this right now. But it is so cute and you'll love this too. It's $7.20. It's called the Vase Builder. Okay. And then you got the Dog Builder. The Dog Builder, here, let's put that one. The Dog Builder is $10.80, or 10 sorry. $10.80 instead of $18. And I use, I mean, not only do I use the dog all the time, but I use this heart all the time. Yeah, the heart, I, the apple works as a pumpkin too. Yep, so I use the heart all the time just to get little hearts that I need. And the silhouette for the dog. All right, so more punches are retiring. And I have them here to show you. They are, this isn't a great sale, but it, it's on sale a little bit. It's called the Banner Triple Punch. So we'll use it. It's not a great deal, but it's retiring. And I have a couple honorable mentions retiring too. Other things I want to show you. Okay, so we'll get back to that catalog later. Let's get crafting. We're going to start out with a, a, a sad card, but it's something that you probably need all the time. It's a, it's a dog sympathy card. I need it for my friend Nan. She, her, she lost her dog Brandy last weekend. And she's been writing about Brandy every single night on Facebook. And I'm like, I have to get over to give her this card. And, I, and so I made this card for, for her and, and, you know, for remind her of Brandy. But I'm going to make another one because, you know what, it's one of those cards where you're just like a regular sympathy card. Where you're like, oh, I wish, let me just, I'm moving everything all over the place. I wish I had um, an extra sympathy card for pets, right? 
Let me tilt my camera a bit. You know, I'm always saying I wish I had an extra sympathy card for pets. So now I will have an extra one. So what I'm gonna so I decided to use this is what I'm gonna use because I already I just have used materials you already have. And in fact, I'm probably gonna make a few of them. I'm gonna use Bermuda Bay as the background. Maybe maybe I'll you know just like I said keep them on hand. We're gonna use Oso Ombre. This was celebration paper that was free. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut four of them. Wait, how many cards do I have? Three. I'm gonna go ahead and cut three pieces just to have them ready. I'm not gonna make you wait for me to make three cards, but I'm just gonna get three pieces. Oso Ombre was the most popular paper during celebration. It was one of the free items you could get, but you can't get it anymore, but I know a lot of you already have it because it was the most popular redeemed item. So when you make a card that you, I'm trying to make simple cards for you in this demonstration. And when you make simple cards, the idea of simple cards is just kind of stamping straight onto the designer series paper. And so I'm going to put the, the, the light part up on the top right, because that's where my sentiment goes. So if I want the light part in the top right, I got to cut off this side, right? So it's four inches wide. Just make sure these are all lined up. Okay, I'm cutting off this side. That make sense? So that I have these part to stamp onto. I want to stamp the sentiment on the lightest part of the paper. Save all these pieces for bookmarks and such. And you want this to be five and a quarter. A typical mat, four by five and a quarter. Okay, so now let's stamp it. I, I can probably stamp them. Maybe I can stamp. No, I'll, I'll probably just stamp one unless I mess it up. But we'll see. I might stamp more if it doesn't take me too long. So what you want to do is you want to get now, I, I am using a retirement, a retired set because my idea of this tutorial is about the punches, but this one's not retired, okay? So this one here, always in your heart, sorry for your loss, is, is, is not only it's not retiring, it's going to be in next year's catalog, so that's cool. But this one, you may already have. So I'm going to use this sentiment here. Best friend leaves a paw print in your heart. I'm using a combination of these two stamp sets. Okay, so use whatever you have to make your sympathy card, but I'm just showing you the, what this what this punch is all about. This punch is awesome. So I'm going to mount the photopolymer stamp and you're always going to stamp onto your mat first. My friend Sander gave me some of these really cool mats. Actually, I better, I'm just going to stamp onto it onto a sticky note. There you go. Making sure that it works, right? Stamp onto something that your stamp is your ink that you're all inked up. And I'm going to stamp it right here. The best friend leaves a paw print in your heart. If you have this set, let me know. Okay. Yeah, Lorna, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I told Lorna I would mention. Let me see who all came in here. Hi, Linda and Gina and Lorna. Now, Lorna, I, told, I said I would mention that when I talk about this great sales, I'm talking about the U.S., not the U.K. So I know you're in the U.K., and you have to see if your Stampin' Up! has, because Stampin' Up! has, we have companies in other places. So, you know, we have, we have, we're headquartered in other places. So when I say there's a great sale, it might not mean it's a great sale in your location, but right now $7.20, I mean, I don't know what that is in British pounds, but it's like cheaper than a cup of coffee. All right. So I'm already done stamping that one. So you might as well stamp them all at once. Okay. You can put that away or you can just kind of stick it somewhere, which I'm going to do because I'm going to be using all my stamping blocks a lot. So now I want to take the little, this little piece and put it at the bottom. This little doggy bowl. Okay, the doggy bowl is from Pampered Pets. Pampered Pets. So we're going to put the little doggy bowl. In fact, sometimes I have to look at my own card here as my guide just to try to recreate a card. Oh, good. I'm glad they're available. But are they on sale? What's your sale like over there for... They're available, but they're the on sale. So when you want to make a when you want to make a border on a card, always start at the middle, because then you can cut off the sides. And I wanted to make it kind of go up and down. I didn't make it go up and down as much in the other one, but see, then that way, when you cut off the last ones, I'm trying not to mess up my beautiful mat from my friend Sandra. I need to get some more of these. I the ones I have are kind of boring for my use. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's good. Best friend leaves a paw print in your heart. It's like while I'm inked up, right? I just want to do it. 
I mean, it's so quick. It's so quick and easy. And then it's like I'll have a sympathy card, or I can just give away if I have an extra. I know I'm going to keep an extra. But and every every time you mess, if you ever mess up your stamping, then all you do is you just add. You know, you put an embellishment over the top of it. Okay. Well, now we'll get rid of that. Or actually, we just we yeah we need to remove that because we're going to need every. We're going to need every place we can get. So we need the little hearts from somewhere. They are from here. We need the little hearts. So we'll take them out. We'll stick them on there. We're going to, and we need the paw print. And the paw print is from here. This is a well-loved stamp set. Can you tell? I have used the heck out of this stamp set. It's, it's been around for a few years. So I put the paw print over on the, next to the best friend leaves a paw print on your heart. I don't know why there isn't a paw print in the Pampered Pets one, because that's where they talks about the paw... Oh, oh no, I see why. This one talks about the paw print. It's in the Happy Tales. But Happy Tales was around for a few years, and pet lovers, I think it got saturated where most pet lovers bought it. So I definitely need to cover that one up. So we'll try this one. Most pet lovers bought it. Okay, so we have two that are working out perfectly so far. So I think what happens is the market gets kind of saturated. And then we, we just change it up because they want to make room for new products. I'll just put it, I'll put an extra heart there. We'll do three sets of hearts. And we're going to put one of my, one of my hearts that I punch out. So we can still, okay, good. And now we're going to put the sentiment. So we're all done the stamping of that and we're going to put the sentiment on now. So you can do the banner triple first. I tend to do my banner triple first to get it short enough and then I can center my sentiment just right. Oops, I think I got one that's too tall. All that preparation and I got them that they were too tall for my sentiment. So now we shall see if I have one that's not as tall. Let's see. They all seem to be too tall. All right, no problem. We trim it down. We'll trim it down and hope for the best. It should be three quarters of an inch, not, not an inch. Okay, and we just hope for the best, meaning if I mess it up, I just turn it over. So the banner triple punch works like this. I mean, you could do it right side up, but I like to turn it upside down and do it. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I like to turn it upside down so that I center it. Now, of course, you can cut your own banners. You might be saying, can I just use a pair of scissors for this? Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes you do things to save time, and punches really help you save time. So always in your heart, so sorry for your loss. That's what we're going to put on there, on that side. And we're putting that in from this Pampered Pets. You can see I have a load of, I'm not even telling you what stamping blocks, I have so many stamping blocks right now out. But you, you just get stamping blocks that'll fit. I stamped onto a sticky note. I'm stamping onto my sentiment, hoping for the best. If not, I turn it upside down. And it came out beautiful. So there's the card. Now, the punch is your main attraction. So whenever you have a punch, it makes your, it makes your whole card. Like, I mean, all I did was stamp and the card was cute. And you could have stamped under the card, but when you get that punch, it just does a whole different thing to your card. It first of all it makes your card 3D. That's what's really cool. It makes your card 3D. And and also it just gives you the main element. So here here it is. I think this is perfect for a sympathy card. You you just punch. It had stuff stuck in there, see? And it still punched out perfectly, the black card stuck. Okay, we'll do it again so you can see that. So when you first get a punch, it's shut. Right? It's shut. You open it up like that. You, you, you unlatch it. And I always look at it. What I always look while I'm punching. I, you could push it down. I mean, it depends. If you have arthritis or something, put the paper in there. Or if it's a little kid, you tell them to put the paper in there and that's fine. And they can push down. Right? That's easier. I mean, if you can't do it with your hand, do it with your foot. The, but the problem is, I mean, it's not a problem. 
I just like to see what I'm doing to make sure I have the paper and all centered in there. Okay, so now I'm going to use got a little bit of. Okay, so now we're going to put it on dimensionals. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I. I think I put the little things up too high. We'll just do that. We'll try this one. The little doggy bowls I put up a little high. That one's better. Oh, I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy. It's a sad card, but I'm happy that it centered. I mean, I'm creatively happy. Not, not about the dog passing away. Okay, uh, obviously. And it doesn't matter how many dogs my friend has. She loves them each as if they're her own children. So now what you need to do is pop up that with dimensionals and put some Wink Estella on it. I just use, I'm going to use some little dimensionals because I want to kind of spread them out. Like, you know, get a few to spread them out. So that is how easy it is to use punches and we're going to even use the heart as well. I'm going to put that heart right there. No two cards are ever alike, as you can tell. <laughs> or here. It says, no, wait, here. Paw print in your heart. I'm going to put it over there. Look, a best friend leaves a paw print in your heart. I think it looks better over there. Whereas on my first card, I put it on the... I put it on that side. But that's when I only had two stamps. Then I, I was making that like the third element. Okay. And now, some... You're going to put that on so Bermuda Bay, Bermuda Bay ombre paper, and you're going to put it on Bermuda Bay to make sure the card opens right with some snail. Oh, no. It's not called snail. Seal Plus. Seal Plus. And that is our simple card with a punch element. And then you, of course, have to use Wink Costella whenever you have something like this. That just adds that little bit of glitter to Mr. Doggy. And it was a female doggy too, so she definitely needs bling. But I mean, even if it's a male doggy, I think, I think it still needs glitter because it's kind of like, you know, a heavenly doggy. And so it needs some glitter. And then you can put some glitter on the heart. And that's your whole card. I would put some white. I'd put some white cardstock on the inside. Don't try to just. Don't try to give someone that color. You know, color. Right. Use some white cardstock on the inside. Card number one is done. That's what I started with, and that's what I created, recreated. And you can see, I even have elements ready to create some more cards with the dog builder punch. So cool. Oh yeah, Lorna. It is. Yeah, dog sympathy cards. I send. I send like as many pet sympathy cards as I do people sympathy cards. Um, it seems like I do. Okay, so now we're going to move on to, okay, so that project, you could also, just to, just to mention the punch, it did go with the stamp set that's retired, but even without this, the reason I didn't even use this doggy is because, you know, I think it just bettered like a silhouette for sympathy card, but what I'm saying is you could use a coordinating stamp set as well. With, with the punch, but the punch is retiring and, and the, but the cat, there's like, we have a cat punch and it's not retiring. So go figure. Maybe there's some, maybe they're coming out with something that goes with the cat. Okay. So next we're moving on to a, this Apple Builder project, another simple card. We're using punches and this time I'm featuring, I'm going to feature, you could just make apples. You could just make pumpkins. You could, you don't even need a stamp set, but this Harvest Hello is also retiring, so I'm going to feature that too. Okay, and this is me, this is when I embossed it. Can you see that? That's when I embossed the apple with some white embossing powder and heat embossed it. All right, so Harvest Hello is a cool little stamp set, and when you just want to make something really cute, where's the, I have a sample. I have a sample cute card that we're making. Where is it? Here we go. This is what we're making. And this could be a cute little teacher gift, or you could write happy harvest, or you could write give thanks, welcome back, you make me smile. You could put anything there. And if you turn this into a pumpkin and a different background, you could put hey there, pumpkin. But what I want to what I want to emphasize is this paper, which is also retiring. I'm trying to just show you retiring items. Maybe overlooked items that you haven't seen before. 
But th this paper, n now it's not that we're not going to have other paper, but wait, is this one of the new ones or the old ones? Let me make sure before I say it. It has wood on it, then it's an old one. Yeah, we have new brights coming out this year, but the brights, we have all these designer series paper in every color collection. Okay, so I'm going to use the brights for this project. I'm going to use, uh, you know, the, the poppy prey, the gra granny apple green, and the, would that be the, I guess, daffodil delight. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. Right? But we have other ones that are coming out in this new catalog. And you may have seen those before because all the new demonstrators got them in their starter kit as one of the gifts. But anyway, those papers are retiring. That pattern, this, this sort of pattern. But it doesn't mean that you can't get papers with Bright's collection and all that. All right, so for that I was making a note card. So this, is for, this must be for my other project. I was just making a white note card. And the white note card is gone. So we'll just do the front of the we'll just do the front of the card. And then we'll we'll pretend we're mounting it like that onto a note card. This came from the memories and more note cards and envelopes, which I think I have handy. If I can find them, we'll finish the card. But the point of this matter is the apple. You always want to stamp first and then punch when you're trying to do this apple builder punch. And you always gotta be cognizant of which side the punch is on. So if you're gonna put the punch into the paper this way, then make sure when you stamp your apple or your pumpkin. And then in the case of pumpkin, you use pumpkin pie. Make sure your apple is facing that way as well. So that when you put the punch in, if you put the apple like this, and then you try to put the punch in to punch it out, it's like, oops, that's not going to work. So you want to make sure you put the apple in the right way. Okay, so I need this block again. I need to put the apple down there. And we're going to just stamp onto my st sticky note with the Memento Black. I'm trying to just use Memento Black ink, but I do use a little bit of blends today. I use Memento Black for all the sentiments and all the little outlines. Yep, it's looking good. This is just a nice little outline of the apple, but you don't even need it. The punch works without it. Oops, I just dropped it. <laughs> no big deal. The punch works without it, so. I mean, this, the shape is cute without it without the black outline. But when you have the black outline, it's cute. So I'm just gonna get in there and punch out the cute little apple with this nice textured paper. And it looks like I've done all this shading and coloring and what have you. I think my apple got stretched in a funky direction. So I'm wondering if when I drop my apple, here we go. I must've dropped it and it got warped a little bit. So, let's see. I'm just going to try it again because when you try to punch it out and it's not even having the same shape of an apple, I mean not the same shape as the punch, it's because this punch got warped a little bit. I mean the stamp got warped a little bit when, you, when I melted it. Yeah, that's a little better now. Either that or it was the angle I was at. Okay, good. Good enough. I, let's say good enough. Okay, then you want to cut out the little the little pieces and to save. So I made little strips to save paper for, for cutting the stems. And you could just stamp those. You can stamp those on like the little stem, the leaf, and we'll take out the half apple slice while we're there. We'll just take out everything we need, make it faster. Okay, so we've got the little stem and we'll stamp a stem on the paper and we'll stamp it twice for good measure just to make sure I don't mess it up. And you just get in there and you punch out your stem. Okay. And now we have a stem. And now we, you get a couple leaves. Stick the mount, mount the leaf on there. Hopefully I don't lose all my stamps later. Stamp onto my sticky note. And I'm just going to stamp a couple leaves. Granny apple green is a great color for this. It's also great for making the apple slices. Okay, and I'm just punching them out with the, kind of putting it at an angle. And I just did two little leaves for my apples. This is a great little teacher appreciation gift. Or, you know, to put on a basket or a tag for a teacher appreciation gift, I should say. Or you could just put the apple on anything, really. You could put A plus teacher and put the apple on anything to, to give the teacher. Like it could be a coffee can and you could put the A plus teacher on the coffee can. 
the can of coffee. When I say coffee can, I mean like, you know, iced coffee. And then teachers love coffee. And then you could put like this, this little A plus teacher on the front of that. Actually, I put so much glue on that one. I can share it with both, both parts of my apple. Okay. I see lots of others chatting around about warehouses and stamping up and crafty corner came in and others and having fun talking about which products you can get on sale in Europe. Because what I'm showing is the US. Oops. That leaf just got stuck down there. So that's kind of you want one to kind of go up a little higher than the other. So you put the leaf in the stem. Oops. Oops, there we go. If you're asking about my website, then it's it's inside the description of the video. Paperchef.stampinup.net. But if you're talking about something in Europe, then you guys can share amongst yourselves. And now I'm just going to pop up this apple with some dimensionals. You can use big dimensionals, but... Sometimes when I have such a big object, I just like to use a few small dimensional so it doesn't droop. Okay, so I'm going to mount this onto this paper that says you're an A-plus teacher. And I want to put you're an A-plus teacher first because if I mess up, you're an A-plus teacher. Or, you know, just so I have enough room. Before I mount that apple, I want to put the little sentiment right there. So if you just came in, we're creating this card. That's what we're making. We're making lots of cards with punches, but this is the one we're making now. I'm just trying to show you how fun and easy it is to make cards with punches. Okay, that's that. There's the sentiment. There's the apple. And now we're going to put the little apple slice there. It's popped up on dimensionals. And that would be cute, but I put a little green slice, little granny apple, green apple slice. On the, on the right there, because I thought that was cute. So we'll mount that next. We'll mount this apple. Apple slice. Okay, I'm always stamping on the paper first. And we'll just kind of do that. Well, I did it like that before, but this time, yeah, I'll do the same thing. I'll do it like again, like that. Okay, and now what I did is I took a little marker here. This is what I did. The Stampin' Marker, the black marker, and I used the thin side and I colored in the seed, the apple seed, to make it look cool. And then what I did is I took the blends and these are the blends we're using today because I'm using the rest on my, I'm using these three on my last card. But I was trying out the, the light and dark and I think the dark is what I ended up using. This is Dark Poppy Prayed. Pretty sure I just used the dark poppy parade. Oh, not the thick side. <laughs> the thin side of the dark poppy parade marker. And I was just coloring it. Oops. I don't know what I did here. I was supposed to make this. I was going to cut this whole thing out in green paper. But I forgot to cut it out in green paper. But you get the idea. So earlier I had cut it out in green paper and you just punch out half of it. Right? But that's okay. No big deal. Because I think it looks cool like that too. I love happy accidents. Because I think it looks cool. I think I might still color it in, in green now. With my with my um, my Stampin' Blends. And then you just take a card and you mount it on there. Okay? You mount, you make your little note card. So that's how you do that punch. Okay? Now let's, let's work on two more punches now. I'm going to move on because I don't want to go searching for my memories and more cards and envelopes in the middle of a live tutorial because the craft room, you know, who knows if I'll find it or not. So now we're moving on to a card that uses two kinds of punches and that's our third project. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Glad you like it, right? Teacher appreciation, a little note, you could just say hello. So we're going to use the umbrella builder punch now. Let's put back the apple. So, 
we're going to, so that one is, we're going to use these two. Okay, we're going to use the Butterfly Duet and the Umbrella Builder Punch. So, the third card we're making, using punches, is this card here. I thought this would be a fun card for spring. And so what we're doing for that card is I already cut the pieces. And I used very vanilla, but this time I thought, nah, you know what, I think I'm going to use So Saffron. So this time I'm going to use no, So Saffron, right, background, instead of the very vanilla. So you take a piece of the Subtles Designer Series paper. So just like I said that this is retiring the brights, we just used the brights. This was the brights collection. You can see how you can just pick any colors and they all go really well together because they're in the same collection. Well, same goes for the Subtles. You just pick any colors out of the pack and they go well together. So if you're not really sure about things, but you like a color collection, just get a color collection. And any, you, you can't go wrong. So here, we'll punch, we'll punch some little butterflies, right, out of this material here, out of this Calypso Coral. Calypso Coral is one of the subtles. And I'm just punching a couple butterflies out of this paper, this subtles designer series paper that's retiring, using the butterfly duet punch. Okay. We get a piece of So Saffron, which is going to be our card background, and we cut out some butterflies. Okay. We get a piece of Highland Heather. This is Highland Heather, another one of the Subtles collection, and we cut out some butterflies. Alright, so we have our butterflies. Put that down. We're done with the butterfly punch for now, but I do want to show you something else to do with that if we have time. And now we're going to do the umbrella, and we're going to take a piece of the wooden paper, the so it's called um, soft sea foam. I'm just trying to find a piece of soft sea foam that has. See that's pear pizzazz. I'm trying to find this. I want this color paper, but I want the wooden texture because the wooden texture it looks really good for the umbrella, the little background of the umbrella. So we're going to put that piece down and we're going to put the umbrella down and we're going to get an umbrella from here. Again, if you don't have a punt, this is this is retiring too, I think. I think it is. You can double check, but it's if you don't have the umbrella stamp, there's another umbrella parasol something or other. We had another umbrella stamp that goes with this punch and you could also just draw it in there. You could just draw the lines. Okay, we're going to stamp the umbrella. Stamp it over here. And we're going to stamp it onto this. And we're going to have to make sure it's the right way for the punch. So let's just double check. The punch is facing like that. All right. So I'll, punch, I'll just put the, put the design somewhere on the bottom of the page. Like so. And we will do another one for good measure. I'm going to show you a Stamparatus trick and stuff like that in a minute too. Not, I'm not getting out the Stamparatus. I'm going to talk about a Stamparatus trick. In theory, something you can do with these punches. Okay. Okay, so that's how you get the, that's how you use the Umbrella Builder Punch. And look at that cool little texture in it, the lines from the wood. Okay, and so that's the umbrella we're going to need for our little rainy scene. I might make a bunch of these for spring. And, you know, I need Easter cards, too. I'm in the middle of doing Easter cards. Oops. That was not as centered, but that's why I was doing two of them. Okay, now we're going to do the stem of the umbrella. So we have the top of the umbrella. Pull that off. We'll do the little handle of the umbrella. That's this piece here. And I just used that same paper. And it's going to have to go in like, it's going to have to face up. See? Don't ever try to punch and then try to stamp onto it, unless you have a Stamparatus, which is another story, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So you need to go right side up, like that. Right? You need to go right side up, so you can fit your punch in there. Oops, I didn't get far enough down to the paper, so I need to, I need to get down closer. I wasn't far enough down on the bottom of the paper. Perfect. Okay. So that's that. Now while I have this out, because that's the last thing I need to do for my project. So while I have this out, I want to teach you about a template. So say you just take, say you, say you just want to use your Stamparatus, right? 
So you would go like this. You would go like this and you'd make yourself a template. Okay? And you'd stick this piece of paper. Just follow me along here. You would take your piece of paper and you'd put this in your stamp positioning tool, right? And you would lie and you'd put your stamps down. Upside down, you'd go like this. Right? You would go like this with your you would face them you would face them down like this, but right? This part, the part that's gonna stick to this to the stamparatus. You would just shove that in there like that. See, there's a little groove, right? It's perfectly in the groove. I hope you can see that. Does it, it's, I'm shaking it, it's not moving. It's perfectly in the groove. Lay this down. Lower your stamparatus lid, right? And get this to stick to the stamparatus. And then, boom, 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 boom. Just, you're just going to just stamp again and again. You're going to replace the shape. You, you just punch out a, a bunch of shapes without even looking. Now you can just punch out a bunch of shapes, like without even worrying about where you're, you know, centering them. And then you put the, then you put the shapes in here, lower your stamparatus lid and just keep stamping away. So that's a trick. And maybe I'll do that another time with some of our new punches as they come out. Oops. I don't even need that punch. I don't even need that stamp and I don't need this stamp. Okay. So we're done. Now we're going to decorate our card. Yay for the spring card. Oh wait, we still need our black. So we need our raindrops. Raindrops keep falling on my head. So, I'm about to stamp and there's no raindrops. Oh yeah, it works for any anything, Gina, that's right. It's a, and hi Wendy, I see that you came in there too. It works for any stamps. So we're going to make sure I get our raindrops the right way. So, that's one of the reasons I use the sticky note. See, you want the raindrops to be thick on the bottom, so. So make it rain on your card. I'm using a piece of balmy blue, part of the Suttles collection. Okay, I might add more rain, but first let's see where our umbrella is going to go. Yeah, I don't need rain under the umbrella, right? Because the umbrella is protecting us from the rain. So that looks good. We do need a handle. So we can glue down the handle later. We'll pop up the, we'll pop up the umbrella with dimensionals. And then we'll glue down the handle as we put the other part of the card together. So punches really just make your card have so much, you know, texture, layer, layers, and fun. Okay, so that's how that goes on the card. Now I'm going to use a piece of So Saffron. Instead of, I used very vanilla earlier. I'm going to use So Saffron. And this, this little piece is just four inches across. And we're going to put that on the card like that. It, because the card is four and a quarter. So when you make your layer four inches across, you have that nice little quarter inch margin or gap around it, right? So I thought it'd be fun to go from, since it's like a spring card, so notice how I left some extra glue there because I'm going to be covering that up with the Highland Heather. I thought it'd be fun since I have a spring card to like put the life showers bring love's flowers. So I thought that'd be nice. So this is a piece of Blushing Bride. Right, and that's going to go right there. And then I'm going to put the piece of Highland Heather between it. So we're going to lower that. And before I put it on there, because if I mess up, I'm not going to glue it on there and then stamp it on. I might mess it up. So now I want to put the sentiment. I'm done with the rain. And you could also use Holo Sunshine. That'd be cute. Rain or shine, you're always in my mind. But I'm just trying to recreate the card I recreated. So Life's Showers, I just think that works good. Under my brow. Life's Showers bring love, bring love's flowers. That's what I think will look nice right there. Stamping right onto the designer series paper. Hold it there for a few seconds. Yippee. Now I can put some seal plus on here. Am I out of seal plus? I didn't bring my refills. I had confidence that I would not run out. There we go. And put that there. And then I have that little piece of Highland Heather to cover up to make it more, you know, centered. I had that little piece for the middle. Right up. I already cut that piece, so it's going to go like right here. It's going to cover up the rain a little bit, but that's, oh, I can't cover up my sentiment. Just like that. And then I can put the handle for the umbrella. See, I didn't want to put the handle for the umbrella yet until I knew where this was going to go. Oops, put that there. 
So do a bunch of cards at once is my advice always. That's my constant advice. <laughs> do a bunch of cards pieces at once and you can get a lot more done. It's almost like this is not centering. Once you get one side, then you can kind of push, push it that way. There we go. It's almost like it's not um, centered on that side. I should have used my trimmer and cut them all together, but I didn't. So luckily I have my paper snips. Oh no, they are, it is fine. It is fine actually. It just needs some adhesive, that's all. It, it's actually fine. Get under there. It just needs a little bit of adhesive to stay down. It looks like it wasn't centered, but it was. Now I'm going to have glue oozing out the side. Oh, well, I need my, keep my glue out because you need it for your handle. Card is coming together. We just need to add our cute little butterflies and from our punch. And we need to add a few of those with some dimensionals. And I put, I used the Highland Heather, the Calypso Coral. And the So Saffron because it matched the card base. Is that handle? That handle's not stamped. That would make a cute little candy cane, it looks like, too. I have one of the umbrella handles that's stamped. Here we go. Here it is. So you want to put that one on. You don't need to pop this up on dimensionals. It's too small to use for dimensionals. You just need glue on this one. Okay, and you got to put that down so you don't put your butterflies in the way. And for the butterflies, you definitely just want mini dimensionals. And you can curl them with a bone folder or just use your hands to kind of curl them. Give them a 3D look. Okay, and then I have the last thing was the flowers. So let's put the flowers there before I put the next butterfly. I already have these mounted and I'm going to put those right there and we're going to color them in. And I usually don't stamp right onto the card, but, but, I mean, I do stamp right onto the card, but what it means is I would have stamped onto the paper before I mounted the paper just in case I mess up, but I forgot, so it's okay. We can, st we can still just hope for the best, and if not, we cover it up with embellishments. Yep, that's working. I mean, if you ever mess up your stamping, you just throw some bling on it and cover it up with embellishments. Ah, oh, but it came out nice. It didn't mess up. All right, so we gotta color in our flowers with our blends, but now I can attach the butterflies. Now I'm not worried about the butterflies not fitting because I have to do the flowers first and then you know where to put the butterflies so that they fit. Curling up the edges to make them pop. And then you need the Clipso Coral one. Put that up here. And you can use a bone folder to curl these. Just giving you something to look at while we color now. That's what I'm, I'm going for the colors of the Stampin' Blends. I'm using the Subtles collection. Oops, he needs to go that way, or she. It's a she butterfly. Here, we'll put that over there, like that. She needs to tilt that direction. All right, so now you're going to take coordinating blends, right, that you're going to use. I'm just using the light colors of my blends. Oops. Ooh, I think I need another Calypso Coral. Ooh, that's totally dried out. On the shopping list for right after this video. I have an ongoing shopping list because... I'm discovering things that are on sale that I don't want to live without. Now, I can live without, but I don't want to live without. So this is a way of just, you're still using the colored paper to make your scene really cute, but it's light colored paper because it's, it's the subtles paper. So you can color the paper and it's fine to color right onto the designer series paper. And you can even take a little bit of so saffron and color in the dots as well. Man, the whole marker is dried out, really. Not just that. I mean, the whole marker. Okay, then I took my, I was using this, what is this one? Mint Macron, because that's one of the subtles. And I was using Mint Macron for the, the leaves. No blending. I mean, this isn't blending because the, the paper's already colored. I mean, all I'm doing is just coloring the leaves in so that it's not such a plain, 
bouquet of flowers, right? It, it, would, it would be okay if it's plain because it's on the Blushing Bride. And this is Highland Heather. And I'm using the light version of the light, the light hide in Heather. Oh, this card came together nicely. You can add some other bling like some pearls as well. You can put Wink Estella on your butterflies. You can take it, you can color in the centers of the flowers. You know what? I must have used dark. It looks like I used dark hide in Heather earlier. And then I just put, I think I put that back and kept the light one out, but look. Oh no, you know what? It's not that I used Dark Head and Heather. It's just that that's dried out too. So now I need that on my shopping list because I don't like refilling these. I did use the Light Head and Heather, but the thin side, because when I refill them, I end up cracking them. You can refill them with some alcohol a little bit, but it only perks it up for a little bit. And then I end up cracking my markers and it wasn't even worth the time and effort really. It was just easier to get new ones. Voila, that is our punch card. With, again, you could use your Wink Estella. This was very vanilla, and this was so saffron. I mean, I like both of them. I mean, I was just using very vanilla because it was subtle. But really, Whisper White would look good in the back, a thick Whisper White. So saffron. Okay, here's another punch card. And here was our first punch card. Okay, so I just want to mention now that we have, I'm going to go back to the catalog and just kind of pull these out as I show you, and I just want to show you something else too. This is, this is one of the sets. Oh, I did, I did mean to show, I meant to show this and just kind of show you can make a real quick little bookmark. This is one of the sets that is like retiring and it's kind of a must have. And what you do with these butterflies is this. You can do two butterflies at once. I'm just going to put that on there, close it. The butterfly gala stamps are attached to each other. Okay, uh, let's use, let's see if I have any colors to use. Nope, we're just going to keep using, keep using black. We're going to hope for the best. We're just going to, we're going to use one of these. We're going to use this petal pink. We'll use petal pink. And hope that comes out. If not, I'll stamp it again. I was gonna do the I was gonna do it on a piece of sticky note first, but okay. So look at that kind of cool stamp set. Butterfly gallop. <coughs> and then you open up your punch and check this out. You can punch both at once. So not only is it cool just to punch any plain old butterflies as elements, but you can do two at once. Which makes life very, very easy. <laughs> So that side is really cool, but so is that side if you're just trying to make shapes. And what's really cool, I think, is making metallic butterflies. Let's get in there. I'm gonna get in there and make a metallic butterfly for you. And then you can emboss the butterflies as well. Okay, so now I'll show you the catalog. That's all I wanted to show you with that. And then you can just make a quick bookmark. Bada boom, bada boom with the petal pink with a little sentiment inside there. And that's the bookmark. And of course I have ribbon and all that, but you get the idea. All right, so back to the catalog. So if you just joined in, what I'm, what the series, the little series I'm doing is called Last Chance Items. And right now I'm just talking about punches. So I showed you that the dog builder punch was 1080. I'm gonna pull that out. The cat is not retiring, the dog is retiring. It was $18 and now it's $10.80, okay? You can, you can make little things for doggy shelters. You could make, uh, I've done this before, where you make things to give a doggy shelter, or give a pet shelter. You make something for them to give as people adopt the pet, like a little thank you bookmark, and you could put little dogs or cats on it. So that's just an idea if you want to make things to help out shelters. It helps them get donations. Or you can say, hey, put these in your lobby, and, and as people donate to you, you give them a free gift. So it's a way for you to help with your crafts, help another organization raise money. Okay, this perennial punch I don't have right here. I think I have it at another place, but, or I had it at another time. This here is, hey, hi, Donna. <laughs> I love it, you're watching. And Kathy came in, hello, hello. 
so this this one is a double so you you like make two pieces and you layer them together and that's only 720 the perennial punch okay snowman is not going away it's not retiring yippee yay yay that's good but the umbrella builder the vase builder and the apple builder is retiring i will try to get one punch out of this without it falling apart because like i said i dropped it and um then this that part came out so i might be able to get one punch out of it without it this metal bar coming out. But it doesn't mean I can't find the piece. I'm gonna look for the piece. I just wanna show you this. How cool are these little vases? Okay, look at these cute little vases. And then you can build your own little flower vases or put, you could put like uh, the little bushels of flowers like we had earlier from another set. That would go cute in the vase. So that's what I was trying to do for a card until my punch fell apart. See, I was trying to put that kind of thing on a card to show you, this vase builder. So that's 720. Okay, now, and then the other, this classic label's retiring. It's not a great sale. The timeless label's retiring. Still, they're not a great sale, but, and banner triple's retiring. But you still want to check them out if, if you really like those punches and you missed them before. And the whale is still staying and the tulip's staying. And I think that was about it for the punches. But if you want to check out the stamp sets, they don't go on sale, like, very much. Like this, because we keep those stamps until the end, like these. I mean, we're, we're going to keep them probably until the very end, like we won't run out. But they are retiring after that. So you still want to get it because it's while supplies last and because it's retiring. But you're not in a, as much of a hurry to get stamps because they're not getting marked down. So I don't think we're going to run out of stamps. Whereas these other things that got marked down, we probably run out of. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that little exploration into what punches can do, how they coordinate with some stamp sets, what easy things you can make with them, how they really make your card pop and give you the nice elements you need to make your projects really fun and easy. Thank you for joining me today. I will be doing something in the next tutorial and I'm gonna just give you a little peek and it has to do with, um, well, no, I'm not gonna give you a peek. It has to do with the curvy, curvy keepsake. I'm just going to tell you about that. And then I'll point you in the direction of another tutorial my friend is doing. After she does it, I'll give you guys the link for that in case you want to watch it. But I think that's what I'm going to do next because curvy keepsake is, is retiring. And I'm probably going to pair that up with some other floral paper that's retiring. So that'll be my next part of the Last Chance series. If, if it's available by the time I do my tutorial. You never know. All right, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. See you next time.